When you shoot in RAW, do you wonder, is there any benefit in using intermediate ISO settings like ISO 125 or 160? There's no single answer. Depending on the manufacturer's implementation of these settings, certain factors will vary camera to camera. Sometimes, things can even be changed with a firmware upgrade. Often they are implemented the same way as the main ISO settings, but could be the result of things like digital multiplication. So how can we get to the bottom of this? To solve this riddle, we're using a Canon 5D Mark II and a program for reading RAW files, RawDigger. Here's a quick overview of some of its features to get you familiar with what we'll be working with today. While we are using a Mac, RawDigger is supported by both OS X and Windows operating systems. We will first analyze the so-called masked pixels, often called optically black area or simply OB, which are a portion of the sensor that we normally do not see in our images. It is covered from light, so it can be a good indicator of the lowest possible noise of the sensor. It is a very useful metric because noise is what we analyze to learn how to optimally use a given sensor. We're going to take a series of shots, varying ISO settings from the lowest to the highest, using, of course, every intermediate ISO setting available. The subject of the shots does not matter. You can even shoot with a lens cap on. Please keep in mind, we are using a Canon 5D Mark II camera, so for other cameras, results will vary. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Bring the first shot of the series into RawDigger, and set RawDigger's preferences to display the black frame. Display Options, Mass Pixels checkbox, Checked. And to not subtract black level. Data Processing, Subtract black checkbox, Unchecked. Here we have OB on the left side of the image. Using Selection, Set Selection by Numbers, select the masked pixels leaving several pixels out of the selection on all four sides. They can leak light or have technological imperfections, which can mess up this entire operation. Just a reminder, this is the data for a Canon 5D Mark II camera, so for other camera makes and models, your selection coordinates will be different. To check that the selection is valid, look at the histogram in linear mode. If the histogram closely resembles the bell-shaped curve at all four channels, the selection is valid. Convert the selection into a sample. Selection, convert selection to sample. And save the data as a .csv file for future processing in a spreadsheet. Please set the checkboxes as you see on the screen. Open the next file and set the checkmark to append file to append the data to the already existing .csv file. Press append file and the star mark to the right of the button should disappear, indicating that the data is appended. Process the rest of the image series the same way. Open the .csv file in a spreadsheet, and add an ISO column and fill it with respective values. Now you can plot the noise against ISO settings. The noise values are in standard deviation columns rdev, gdev, bdev, and g2dev. For our Canon 5D Mark II camera, the plot looks like this. On this plot, the x-axis is the ISO settings, while the y-axis is the noise on the logarithmic scale. You can see that the plots for all four channels are extremely close. The interesting part is the sawtooth between ISO 100 and ISO 1250. Contrary to expectations, the noise at ISO 160 is the lowest, while the noise at ISO 125 is higher than at ISO 400. This is enough to suspect that something out of the ordinary is going on. Let's dig deeper. Dividing GDEV at ISO 125, 6.8238, by GDEV at ISO 100, 5.414, we can see that the noise is increased by a factor of 1.26. Incidentally, one-third of an EV is equal to the cube root of 2. 2 to the one-third equals 1.26. Let's look at the next slope, formed by ISO 160, ISO 200, ISO 250. Dividing the ISO 200 noise value by the noise value at ISO 160, we get a factor of 1.24. Dividing the ISO 250 noise value by the value at ISO 200, we get a factor of 1.27. Meanwhile, the noise values for ISO 100, ISO 200, and ISO 400 are very close which suggests that the abnormal noise values at the intermediate ISO settings 
are artifacts of in-camera raw data processing. They are caused by some additional stage to form the data values for intermediate ISO settings. They are not native and are most probably produced digitally. See how close the value for digital exposure adjustment of one-third of an EV is to the factor by which the noise changes between the main and intermediate ISO settings. But are these data values of any use? From just looking at the noise values, one can deduce that the lowest noise value is at ISO 160. Well, case closed then, right? Just like everybody has been telling us, these intermediate ISO values have the lowest amount of noise and so are the best for shooting. But wait a minute. We don't quite have all of the facts yet. Because you see, it isn't just the noise value that we are interested in. The characteristic we are actually looking for is the signal to noise ratio. What does this mean? Well, if we take a closer look, it becomes plainly evident that not only is the noise at ISO 160 lower, but the signal is lower as well. In fact, the signal to noise ratio for ISO 160 and ISO 200 are essentially the same, especially if we are not just looking at the optically black area, but at the image area as well, which is where some light is involved. Let's set up a scene which consists of a black trap, essentially reflecting very little light back to the camera, and a small shining metal ball, which will be the source of specular highlights, causing the small portion of the sensor to reach its saturation maximum. There is plenty of advice on the internet on how to make a black trap. We're using a data color spider cube, which is an extremely compact and useful exposure and white balance setting tool. Place the camera on a tripod and photograph the cube over some matte background at the exact same shutter speed and aperture value, setting ISO 160 for one shot and ISO 200 for another. The shutter speed should be such that it assures a small hotspot on the metal ball. Testing exposure, bring the shots into Raw Digger, switch on overexposure indication OVEXP, and see that you have one or two small red dots on the ball. On the image below, you can see two red eyes. These eyes indicate sensor saturation. If you do not have them, reshoot with a slower shutter speed and check if there is now some overexposure on the ball indication. Now, you should have two shots, one ISO 160 and the other ISO 200 taken with the same shutter speed, which you just determined, and the same aperture value. We are going to process these shots in Raw Digger. Let's place two samples on the first shot, one over the black trap and the other over the specular highlight. You can change the sampler size and Raw Digger preferences under miscellaneous options. Next, we save the samples to a .csv file. Open the other shot. If there was no mechanical movement between the shots, there should be no need to adjust the sampling position. Changing the mode by checking a append file appends the data. Now, let's go to the spreadsheet. Open the resulting .csv file in a spreadsheet and calculate the ratio of the saturation level to the noise. For the first shot, the saturation is 12,810, while the noise is 6.077. The ratio is 2,107.8092. For the second shot, the saturation is higher, 15,760, and the noise is also higher, 7.335. Nevertheless, the signal-to-noise ratio is slightly better, higher is better, and equal to 2,148.7490. The interesting part here is that the ratio between the saturation at ISO 200 and saturation at ISO 160 is once again very close to 130 of an EV. That is, 1.23. This is the key to our riddle. For both ISO 200 and ISO 160, the sensor and the ADC, analog to digital converter, are run in the exact same mode, which is why the signal to noise ratio is practically the same. The exposure at ISO 160 is in fact the result of exposure at ISO 200, but shifted to the left by one third of an EV, or in other words divided by approximately 1.25. Yet another way to put it is that noise-wise, the result of an exposure at ISO 160 is equivalent to the exposure at ISO 200 with the shutter speed slowed by 1 30 of an EV or aperture opened 1 30 EV wider. Of course, 
it appears from this that the headroom at highlights for ISO 160 is one-third of an EV less compared to ISO 200. This suggests that though the noise at ISO 160 seems to be lower than the noise at ISO 200, the signal-to-noise ratio is the same, and there is no benefit in using ISO 160, at least if you shoot raw. Now that you know the process, you can repeat the simple analysis for other intermediate ISO settings, looking at the signal-to-noise ratio, and decide for yourself whether to use these intermediate ISO settings or not. Mystery solved! Please see the description of the video for the links that you may find useful for conducting this test on your own, and visit rawdigger.com for more videos, tutorials, and how-tos, as well as to get a copy of Rawdigger for yourself.